Hey, it's me, Hannah. Today, this week, I am feeling vulnerable, in some ways vanquished, and certainly vexed. And you know, the rest of the V for Vendetta speech. Verily, this vicious swaz of verbiage veers most verbose, so let me simply add that it's my very good honor to meet you and you may call me V. And let me get serious for a second. I have always wanted this channel to playfully capture my escapism and what a privilege it is that I have to have the opportunity to escape and to share it with you. I don't want to dwell on it too long, but I do want to encourage you, dear viewer, to allow yourself the space and the time to live in whatever fantasy that a book or a film or that I and other fellow YouTubers can offer you right now, but it can only be temporary. Come back to this world that we live in, rested and ready to take action, to build up and protect the rights of our communities to exist. I love you, and I am so grateful and honored that you're here with me right now. Okay, so in light of feeling so small right now, I've been looking to small characters for inspiration. Small characters who overcame obstacles so much bigger than them. There's some good in this world, Mr. Furl. And it's worth fighting for. So with a fantasy ball in a week and a desire to armor myself up, metaphorically and physically, if I'm being honest, I have decided to take on my biggest, baddest, chainmail project yet. I want to make a mithril chainmail gown to wear to an upcoming fantasy fete. <laughs> mithril. Let me show you what I'm thinking. As always, this is a rough sketch, keyword rough, just to get me started. And because I only have a week and some change to put this look together, I've actually purchased two butcher aprons to give me a sort of pre-chained starting point. These aprons are both dainty and heavy duty at the same time. And they come with a sort of neckline and waistline that I think I can work with. Now for this particular woman in armor look, I'm actually gonna lean away from like Joan of Arc and Galadriel and lean towards more of the Zendaya and Chapel Roan looks. I kind of want to make this high fashion and I've given myself like a week to do it. Classic Hannah. Well, let's get to work. I had to start by removing most of the metal pieces that are meant to have apron straps attached. It was rather tedious, but not as tedious as having to actually make chainmail with rings this small. So I'm happy with this choice. I did repurpose four of these connection points in order to meet my own strap related needs. Okay, so far I am, I'm pretty happy with this. As you can probably guess, this is already pretty heavy. I definitely wanna reinforce the like small rings that are holding these on. And I'm still not sure about the placement here. I wanted to get sort of the same drapey moment we're getting in the back in the front, hopefully without adding or taking away any additional rings, but I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the neckline right now. But I am really loving the drapiness of the back. Though I do think I need to like bring up the side seams a little bit to pull this up into the right spot. Plus I just love the open back. I think that mixed with the sheerness of the mesh definitely has me questioning what I'm gonna wear underneath. I'm gonna keep thinking about it, might try a few different things, but I'm currently leaning towards just getting some 
skin toned undergarments and kind of leaning into that like sheer chapel roan red carpet look. We'll see, we'll see where I'm at. And then lastly, I do, I want to extend this. The goal is to have something floor length. I don't have any more rings that are this size to make more mesh. And I don't know if I'm gonna have time to order more, but my original idea was to create sort of a two tone look with like different material at the bottom. So now my question is, do I wanna do more chain mesh using a similar size ring to my straps and belt? Or do I wanna do some scale mail? I think I'm gonna have to just take inventory of what I currently have and then decide based off of that. Today feels like a good day to destroy some things. I have decided to go with rings over scales or anything else for the bottom portion of the dress. And in order to hopefully be saving time slash reducing, reusing, and recycling some of the materials I have on hand, I have actually been taking apart my chain shirt and other chain accessories that I've made in the past in order to actually have enough rings to make the rest of the skirt. That's actually left me with some really interesting shapes at the bottom of the dress. So today will be all about filling in some of the gaps there after taking apart pieces like my what used to be my chainmail coif and other other pieces I've made in the past in order to reuse some of these rings. On the one hand, I, I could definitely be saving some time by taking apart bigger pieces of the mesh and being able to just kind of reapply that to my dress. On the other hand, it certainly requires just a little bit of extra brain power to make sure you're puzzling the pieces together correctly. So yeah, I think I am saving time, but I don't know if this is quite as fulfilling as creating my own chainmail. Either way, this is the path I have chosen, and I if I'm going to get this dress done in time, I got to get to work. Let's get back at it.
That's really heavy. I'll tell you what, when I tried this on, the straps are doing a lot of work. And I think if I'm going to wear this for a couple hours at the ball, I'm gonna need to readjust the straps and make them a little wider, just kind of spread out all of that weight. There are definitely a couple details I wanna work on. If I can cinch the waist in one way or another, whether that's uh, by using a belt or clasps or ties or something like that. I think I, that will also help with the weight distribution and distribute a little bit of that weight to my, you know, my hips instead of just on my shoulders. So I'm not positive how that's going to look. It's probably going to take a couple different tries just to see what feels the best. I'm going to try my hardest to maintain the open back because it's probably my favorite detail. I have ordered a couple different options for things to wear underneath, both very minimal items to really get kind of that sheer chapel roan look, as well as like near full coverage black bodysuits. And I guess we'll just see how confident I'm feeling that day. <laughs> this really is very heavy. I do wanna work on some accessories to go with the dress to help tie it all together. And if we refer back to my sort of inspo drawing, I did have a chainmail glove, and I actually already do have these, but I don't know if that's quite the right move. So I think I'm going to use some of my lighter, easier to open and close rings to make some gloves, probably fingerless, probably maybe mid forearm length, just to give a little bit more to it. I love a big statement piece, but something I'm really trying to work on is the details and really bringing a whole look together. I'm happy I've at least gotten to a point where I have something to wear. So now it's all about one, comfort, and two, detail work. Let's take it up a notch. Now I wouldn't call this a comprehensive tutorial on how to make a chainmail fingerless glove, but I will tell you it requires a good number of foreign ones. So as with most of my chainmail projects, I kicked it off by creating a pile of foreign ones, just an unending pile of foreign ones, which I did eventually put together to create a rectangle. This rectangle needed to be wide enough to wrap around my hand and long enough to meet my glove length requirements. Then I removed a couple foreign ones from one of the long sides of the rectangle, leaving enough space for what will eventually be the thumb hole then all you have to do is attach the two long sides to create a cylinder, which you'll then be able to wear as a fingerless glove.
I cannot express to you how happy I am that this chainmail dress came together as beautifully as it did. This look is not something I would typically go for, but I have been thinking about a chainmail gown for years now. And after seeing Nightcore have its moment in the spotlight at the VMAs, I'm just so excited to have had the opportunity to bring this to life. Okay, yes, elephant in the room, you can seriously see what I have going on underneath. I do wish I had taken the time to figure out the base layer first, but honestly, it was fun to show off my tattoos. If, or rather when, I get the opportunity to wear this dress again, I will definitely spend time custom making some undergarments that will fit the bill. There were some other issues with the dress, one of them being how heavy it was. The dress alone weighed in at 12 and a half pounds, and with the rest of the pieces, I ended up carrying around an extra 15 pounds in total. Try dancing in that. Another issue I ran into pretty early on was how much residue the dress left on my fingers when I touched it or picked up the skirt to dance. And when I took it off at the end of the night, I had to scrub the rest of my body for quite a while. It definitely became a funny talking point through the evening though. My last complaint is that the combination of steel and aluminum did nothing to keep me warm. It was in the low 50s most of the night, and when I wasn't standing by a space heater or actively dancing, I was shivering aggressively. Luckily, there was plenty of dancing to be had. This was a dream project, and I had so much fun making it and wearing it to the Fantasy Fet. And if you had as much fun as I did, it would mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe. And if you do, I'll see you in two weeks for my next video. Take care.